Hi, everybody. This is John Stoll. Mike let me know that the last class we did, which covered some of my original tunes, got a good response, so we thought we'd do another one of those for you. This time I thought I would do Schiffleting, which is named for a bassist, John Schifflet, who was a great Bay Area bass player that I played with for many years uh, down around San Francisco, San Jose area. Another one called Springfield Sonata, and a third one called Always Sometimes. So is it. So as I mentioned in my last class, the purpose in sharing these tunes with you is not necessarily for you to want to play the songs, although I'd be thrilled if you like them enough to try to attempt them, but because these are chord melodies, I think you would find that there's some interesting chord shapes that you could use uh, in a broader context, comping over a standard or maybe using them in some of your own original tunes or um, using the chord shapes to generate templates for single line playing. I use my tunes uh, in all those ways. write these, they kind of begin as small comping exercises and somehow morph into tunes. I, the process itself is kind of mysterious to me. I'm not really sure where they come from. And in some cases, I'm discovering chords that I have never played before, and then I can analyze them after the fact. Uh, in some cases, there is some mixed meter in these tunes, as you'll see in the charts, but typically for the blowing, I generally even things out to either 3-4 four or 4-4, four, four, occasionally an odd meter, but usually one of those two to make the blowing a bit easier. So I'll explain all this to you as we go. Tonic, fifth, so this is an F sharp, open D string, an A, an open B string, and then I'm adding the major seven on the second fret of the B. This next chord is a, is a G minor. The reason it sounds a bit unusual is because it's a melodic minor with the octaves displaced. So I have five, major seven, and flat three. Here would be a more conventional minor major nine, for example, or minor major seven. I really like the sound of breaking the, of, of dispersing the octaves. One of my favorite guitarists who used this concept so elegantly and beautifully was Jimmy Weibel, who was an incredible guitarist who had this beautiful combination of jazz and classical sensibilities that he would mix together with incredible voice leading, beautiful double stops. And I had the pleasure of knowing Jimmy and spending a little time with him and watching him create some of his etudes and play in this style really sort of inspired me to try to explore a little bit too. classes is discuss a little bit about how a particular chord shape might be extrapolated out to some other shapes and sounds. Um, I found that if you're using a formula and understanding some variations on that formula using perhaps a new chord shape, uh, that can lead to other interesting shapes and I'll try to take you through that process a little bit today too with each individual tune. So my goal in doing hybrid picking is to match the attack of the pick and fingers. If you're not working on your hybrid picking, what I'd suggest you do to begin to develop that skill is take very simple four note voicings that you're familiar with so that you're pulling the three notes, the three fingers I should say of your right hand uh, into conjunction with your pick. Thank you. 